question will be in English, but you can ask a question anytime in Chinese or Cantonese if you can speak Cantonese. So, <laughs> okay. So uh, today I'm going to share my project, which is called Serasi, a reverse proxy server for noobs retaining GoLang. So I'm Toby, and I'm a open source software developer, primary author of our OS and Serasi project. Um, I'm currently a master student at NCKU, uh, the CSIE department, and previously graduated from the Hong Kong Polytechnic Universities. Uh, I don't think it's going to help. Uh, testing, testing. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. So uh, before I start this sharing, I want to thank a few important people behind this project to make this possible. Um, so what is a reverse proxy? A reverse proxy is a server that sits between your origin servers and your client. So it has a few advantages, including high backend infrastructures, provide single access gateway to all your services, and enhance performance by sometimes load balancing or catching. So um, for starters, if you have no networking background, uh, if you do not have a reverse proxy, each of your subdomain need to point to a separate public IP address or a network location for each of your servers. But if you have a reverse proxy in place, all of your subdomain can point to a single access gateway to a reverse proxy server, which only occupy one single public IP address, and allow that uh, reverse proxy server to forward the request to your other local servers. For example, like local servers like uh, web servers or other game servers, etc. Because I'm not like a Kubernetes person, though I don't really use Docker. So um, I buy some secondhand servers, Raspberry Pi and low power devices to host my own home lab. Um, anyone using home lab or anyone have a home lab at your home right now? No? Really no? <laughs> All right. Uh, so um, basically just a home server, you put a few computer into it and then host uh, some kind of your self using services. And I'm looking for something to, you know, link up all my servers across my distributed home lab setups. So the first one you find on Google regarding reverse proxy is uh, Apache or Nginx. There's the most famous or infamous one for handling reverse proxy workloads. Um, if you have used one before, you know that uh, you need to, every time you want to change something, you need to SSH into your servers and then modify the Apache to config, which is quite troublesome for networking loops. And um, if you want some further functions like socket proxy, your IP blacklist, etc., you need plugins to do it which is kind of problematic, I would say. Um, so I go on Reddit to see what people are recommending for reverse proxy. So the Nginx proxy manager pops up because it is the only one out there, but um, it hasn't been updating you know, for like two years, and it didn't really work on Windows, where some of my nodes are Windows nodes. So it's a little bit problematic to set up on Windows servers. KD is another Golang solution. I think many people know this. Um, it also based on a text-based configuration files, so, um, it's quite a little bit troublesome to set up for, you know, have no networking backgrounds. Terrific uh, is the most famous commercial solution out there, also written in Golang, but it's also designed for cloud native, so it works with Kubernetes and, uh, you know, Docker things. But in my setup, I can't use Kubernetes because my servers are too low power. So that's why I write my own Seroxy project. And I didn't plan to open source it or make it, you know, uh, a proper project until I put it on Reddit and then it become very famous, I'm not sure why. And people like this project so much, so I decided to open source it and tidy up a little bit. So overview, uh, what is Zoraxi? Zoraxi is a 100% Golang written um, a toolbox containing everything you need for your home net networking. No matter it's like a distributed home net like mine or a centralized home net, you have a server right at home. It's all suitable for these usages. And this is designed for a noob, so it has like great UI uh, explanation on the user interface, so you can know everything just by looking at the description. Serasi provides four main features, reverse proxy, tunneling, statistic analysis, and utilities. Um, let's start with the reverse proxy, right? Reverse proxy, um, it provides basic reverse proxy functions, including basic off, um, forward off is work in progress, um, TLS, SSL management, access controls, and custom redirection rule setups. So um, if you have worked with an Apache before, you will, notice you will know something like this, right? This is uh, the Apache config, which is a virtual host configuration. And in Seroxy, you can do it with just a web form. So you just fill in all the fields, and then you click create endpoints. Then it will create some kind of uh, backend representative representation, which is similar to these configurations. So you can basically set up your subdomain setup, uh, you know, proxying rules in just a few minutes. Also, side notes: the reverse proxy function is powered by the uh, HTTP use how reverse proxy function, but I modified it quite a lot just to make it more suitable for reverse proxy workload instead of like you know generic reverse proxy modules. You can know more about this one on my GitHub source code. I published it on GitHub already. 
Uh, it also provides features like one click setup of your IP, blacklist, whitelist. Like if you want to block certain countries off, you can do it in here. And you can also set up a redirection rules for uh, handling your previous setup or old you know, URLs. Um, another feature of RC is that it contains something uh, the like the uh, ACMD.sh if you have uh, worked with SSL before. So you can deploy Soraxi on Windows and let it handle all of the automatic renewal things via ACMD protocol to your favorite CA providers like you know uh, Let's Encrypt, for example. And you don't really need to set up a Linux environment or uh, a Docker for doing these things. Let's talk about tunneling. So um, a friend of mine from, I think this, this university, um, I steal his, and I, I mean I fought his code from his GitHub, um, which is called Entity Bypass, which provides three main features for Seroxy, including transport, listen, and startup startup mode for handling TCP package proxying. So I'm going to skip this tool because it's not quite commonly used. The transport layer is very helpful if you have like you know a few Minecraft servers running on different local servers and want to have a single access point for all of your Minecraft servers, then this will be helpful. Anyone using zero tier here? Anyone know about zero tier? Okay, a few. So zero tier is very helpful for uh, passing through NATs. For example, if you have a few clusters in your university lab or at your home under an NAT network, then zero tier can help bridge them together. And in Seroxy, uh, based on the zero tier open source project, I integrated the zero tier controller into Seroxy. So you can have pretty much infinite nodes in Seroxy to be uh, virtually bridged by a global area network controllers. So, okay, let's move on to the statistics. Um, if you are hosting your website for you know, uh, self business or commercial use case, then Seroxy might be helpful because it can collect data on where your visitor come from, uh, what device or what browser they are using, and provide a really simple to use, you know, an obvious uh, diagram to showcase what your visitor is interested in. So um, for example, it will provide the referral site headers, although it's not quite accurate, but you can know where they come from. For example, they come from Google or other Facebook posts refer your website, then you can know where their visitors are coming from. So um, because of the time limit, I didn't really write a lot of technical stuff here, but there are other worth mentioning features of Seroxy, including WebSSH. So it is powered by one of my favorite Go open source project, which is called GoTTY. Um, it basically allow the uh, SSH terminal to pass through the WebSocket tunnel and allow you to have a virtual terminal on your browser like this one. So um, other features or utilities, including uptime monitors and DNS scanner, IP scanner, are so all included in the package in one single binary. So you just execute it, and everything will be inside there for you to manage your clusters. So um, after the, uh, you know, after I develop Seroxy and I deploy it on all my servers um, and the entry node, then it becomes something like this. So I could pretty much use single application, single binary file to deploy on all my servers to handle all my routing just with single program. Um, currently, Seroxy is used to uh, proxy my homepage at imslab.com, as well as my test bench on the right. So um, if you want to experience the uh, responsiveness of this proxy, you can take a look on my website and homepage. And that is pretty much for today. Um, this is my uh, homepage for this project. If you're interested, you can scan this QR code and you know, try it out on your Raspberry Pi or, or your old Windows PC or OS X Trust. So thank you for listening. Um, if you have any questions, you can add me, ask me in uh, Chinese, English, or Cantonese if you are from Hong Kong. Um, <laughs> you can also find me uh, with this email address at the bottom right here. So um, thank you for listening, and have a happy lunch break. Thanks. So I have one here. Uh, how do you handle the, the data? Like if like there's a DDoS or something, what's the security up? like security thing you do with the, the TCP proxies? Because people use this for like, t you, know, you know, yeah. Okay, so usually you rent a VPS, like a cheap one out there, and then proxy a TCP request to your own servers, right? You don't really set up your own protection at your home. Especially, yeah, you handle your HTTP request protection with something like uh, Cloudflare, etc., and then TCP mostly by other providers. Yeah. Is there a 
红中文味哦，就是你在家里边用用你的那个红呃 server 嘛，那那你在家的网络需求你是怎么样把他们做连接？你是用同样的 network 在就是在家里面使用？或呃 ，share 给其他，然后也同样的用这样的的 network 去提呃对外提供服务。那你这边有什么特别的呃 set up 去把它们区分开吗？还是你把它整个混合在一起使用？哦，这个呢，其实呃，我是有用家里的网络，也有用很大学或是社团的网络这样子，这是分散式的嘛。然后我会用其中一个是比较安全的一个。一个 node 为它的 entry point， 它进入点，然后从那里再 reverse proxy， 透过 serial tier reverse proxy 到其他的 cluster 里面。那这样子的话，假设我有其中一个 entry point 是在成大的那个 CNS 那边的，那成大本身就很有那个网络保安的那种东西，所以我都用它的那个作为进入的点，然后再把那个 request forward 到其他的有 NAT 下面的网络这样子设计。哎，呃，我我的意思是说，想要问的是，你自己家里面的网络的需求，也是会有上网的需求吗？啊，对，对，那你是呃，会把他们就混合在一起使用吗？还是说你会把他们区分开来？嗯，我是混合在一起使用啊，就是因为我自己的网页是不是就是我的 home page 嘛，没有太多人去看嘛，所以其实一百两百 m 是还蛮够用的。呃，想请教一下，因为我们知道，呃，那呃 ，NGS 呃 ，NGS 呃，那个 Project Manager， 它是透过那个 UI 在设定界面。那 Traffic 的话，它是可以用 YAML 来设定。那所以，如果说我们要用在一个呃，可能会有个多个服务的一个 solution 的话，那在嗯，这个嗯，目前这一套您发展的这个 Pro Reverse Proxy 的。服务啊，如果设定说我已知的那个导向是呃比较像是那个呃 a n g e l s p r o x y 那个 p r o x y Manager 那个方式吗？还是说像那个 Traffic 的方式？呃，它是比较像是 NPM， 就是 a n g e l s p r o x y Manager 的方式。它就是有一点像呃，我可以给你看一下那个，呃，它就是有一个界面可以直接让。user 去传取到里面的一些东西的感觉，对，它大概是长这样，就是一个很简单的界面。你如果说你要加入什么 subdomain 之类的，你就直接就是直接加一个 root 进去，它都可以直接去改里面的设定，你不用去碰后面任何的 terminal 之类的。那那有办法说，呃，我们如果已经设定好之后啊，呃，或者是说让它变成一个参数化的方式来喂进去，让。呃，不用进入这个界面就可以有预设的一个设定方式。啊，有有有有你可以透过那个，就是有一个 export import 的 function 去直接把东西给灌进去，这样的也可以做一个 restore 跟 snapshot 的功能。好，那如果说我可能呃由外部来做一些设定的方式的话，那会不会看起来就很像很复杂？我一定这个看起来是类似 backup 的概念的哈。嗯。那有没有一个类似我在外部先 config 呃先 config 好？然后再把呃 import 进去这样。哦，有有有，它也有一个呃 file， 我刚刚就是开始讲嘛，它会把你的 web form， 例如说你在这里填好一个资料，去建立一个新的 reverse proxy 的 endpoint 的时候，它会在后端就是服务器那边会建立一个设定档，它其实也是一个 text based 的档案、嗯，对，那个档案就会用来，如果你要做 migrate 或者是做呃自动化 deploy 的话，你都可以直接把那个档案 copy and paste 到其他 node 上面做这样。好，那了解，谢谢你啊，好。谢谢哦好，我来了，等一下，手机预举着。没有没有，他今天那边是线上的，线上的，线上的，嗨。他问，不是还说你可以开玩笑？等一下 ，reserve 的，等一下 ，try reserve。哦，有人问你那个 benchmark 的结果嘛？这样，呃 ，currently not yet. We just entered beta like last week, and uh, the Docker image is like also released last week. So we didn't have a benchmark yet, but you can feel free to do it. It's everything on GitHub already. Yeah, 对。啊，其他问题？啊
啊，对啊，可以啊。呃，我的问题是，呃，如果 z o r a x y 它是部署在 NAD 后面，然后刚刚听起来是透过一个像 Zero Tier 的 Tool，、嗯、然后来达到就是把这个服务铺露出来的需求。嗯、那这部分应该刚刚讲了没有，就有点快。那可不可以请你再稍微多描述一下？这边是比如说怎么跟 Zero Tier 合作？嗯，啊、哦，对对，那个部分就是这个部分嘛，就是 Zero Tier 的部分。假设你有一个 Cluster， 在一个可能家用环境或者是在学校实验室那一种。就是 NAT 的权限不在你那边，就是你没办法去用透过其他的，比如说 UPnP 的方法把 NAT 打穿这样子。那这个时候你就可以透过 Zero Tier 的网络去做 Breaching 去桥接，这你的一个 Cluster 跟另外一个 Cluster。那 Thrusty 的功能就是可以做到这个桥接功能。例如说，你可以把 Reverse Proxy 的 Target 设定到 Zero Tier 的虚拟的 IP 地址。那这样子，它都可以 request 进来，透过 public IP 地址进来的时候，它都可以透过那个虚拟的 IP 地址路由到你在 NAT 后面原本没办法从外网去介入的一些节点的。OK， 这个 OK 吗？啊、oh, 好。So is there any questions? Any questions? OK， then go get go get lunch. I'll see you in a bit. OK， 一点半回来哦，我期待看到你们。